guys, we're back. A little processor review here. This is the Rockford Fosgate DSR1. This is a eight channel sound processor by Rockford. Uh, really cool piece. Tons and tons and tons of features. Tons and tons of features. Um, tons of equalization. Just massive amounts of options with this thing, especially in its price range. Um, under 300 bucks with the base knob, or around 269 to 299, basically in that price range retail-wise. Probably my favorite processor. Especially for the price, I'm not talking 700, 800, 900 dollar processors. You're looking for something for that general install, um, where you're not going to compete and you're not going to take it to competition. But not that you couldn't, because it has so many features built into this. You probably absolutely could, um, but just just an absolute ton of cool stuff. Built. Sorry about that. It's a little better view there. So, let me open this up and then we'll go over some of this stuff. So, open it up. We have our overview and setup on here. And it gives you all your wiring options. It shows you how to do your updates uh, and how to do your programming. So, you can basically program this uh, for universal mode. Use it in any car. Uh, or you can set it up. There's some vehicle specific uh, harnesses that you can buy that'll work with a lot of like your premium sound systems, you know, Ford with Sony sound systems. Um, they're working on GM right now, amplified, non-amplified, um, some, some European vehicles that are out there. Um, so you can go to their website, um, just look up my data link, Maestro, and um, it'll, it'll give you a kind of an overview. You can punch your car in and look and see if you have a T-harness. T-harness makes it easy. Literally plug it in, un 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 unplug your factory radio or factory screen, it tees in, and then we'll plug in directly into our Rockford unit. This is just our little warranty card, but that's it. Super small, easily hideable. I mean, that's the palm of my hand. Yeah, I'm a bigger guy, I got a little bit bigger hand, but still teeny, 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 tiny, easy to hide. There's our output plug. PLC stands for uh, punch level control. So basically you have a base knob option. It's a direct plug-in. We have our input. So we have our vehicle specific input plug here. Then we have our standard input plug here. High or low level inputs. Uh, expansion port. USB is for updating. All your power stuff is going to be in our input plug. I'll show you that in a second. But yeah, I mean, how tiny is this? So, I'm this up. Show you some of the wiring. That's it. So there's our USB plug for updating. Goes right into the computer. Output plug. Now this, so you know, we've got four inputs. I'll show you those in a second. We have eight RCA outputs. So you have basically a set of fronts, a set of rears, a set of sub, and then you have two additional where you can do either center channel or you can just have channels, you know, say it's actually channels technically six and seven, um, would be extra outputs. You can put an amp for tweeters, um, and basically you can control everything independently. So eight outputs that are completely configurable. Show you our input plug. So there's our input plug. Got power and ground. We've got remote outputs. Remote input, that's what both of these are here. So one's a remote out, one's a remote in. We've got left front, right front, left rear, right rear, and then we do have an SP diff in. And then we do have also an auxiliary in. So if you got a radio that does not have a, uh, an aux in jack, you can actually switch between the two inputs, aux in or main in. So your main inputs are going to be either RCA input from a deck, so you can use an aftermarket radio, or all you do is cut these little guys off, and now it's your high level in. And there's a switch like we showed you on here, 
for high and low level input. So you're just going to change your switch, low level, RCA, high level, cut them off, go direct in. So that's if you're using it in universal mode with this harness. So you're only going to use this harness for your input that goes there. And then you're going to use a vehicle particular one that will go into here. All right, guys, don't mind my dirty phone. I'm going to try this. So this will kind of give you a little bit of some of the features here. So here's our EQ section. Here's our EQ section. And so this will be our front EQ. And then we can go into here. This gives us all of our different EQ options. After setup, if you had cha the extra channels, as I say, not used would be open as well. So front, extra, rear, and then your subwoofer. So you have equalization for everything. Click the bars up here. This is on Android, of course. Um, so there's all of your level adjustments. I'm going to keep this thing in focus here. Here's all your level adjustments for each individual channel. Here's our time delay options for every single channel, including subwoofer. Here's our crossover functionality. So you have all pass, band pass, low pass, high pass. All completely selectable. So we're on our subwoofer channel right now. Going in from 6 dB to 48 dB octave on the sub, and that's on low pass. So you also can go band pass. You have between 6 to 24 dB for band pass. Go back to low pass. You also have high pass from 6 to 48 dB on high pass. So again, that's for every single channel. There's back to our EQ, and then we can go back home. So, and then you do have a main volume adjustment that's there, subwoofer level, and punch EQ. Mm -hmm. So, tons and tons of options. If you have any questions, just, just ask. You know, can I just give you a quick walkthrough again? Trim, time alignment, crossovers, and full EQ. 31 bands of EQ for each channel. So you get basically 245 bands of total equalization. So like I said, very simple to use. This is our, and also on your, sorry about that, uh, on EQ, you also have the gain for each individual channel. You also have the Q factor, and you can also change the individual frequencies. All right, friends, so just got finished up installing the Rockford DSR-1 processor in a 2017 Chevy Silverado with the 8-inch MyLink uh, radio in the dashboard. Um, Non-amplified, non-Bose. So we went direct in, speaker level in, um, basically six-channel RCA out to a JL, um, the 1000X5. They left stock speakers in it and did some EQing, didn't really go too much into time delay because there's still stock speakers. We're gonna do that when we do some aftermarket upgrades and stuff like that later on. But I'm gonna tell you what, if you have a Chevy Silverado, do that because that's by far now the best sounding Chevy Silverado with stock speakers that I probably ever heard um, with that, that setup in there. The JL amp was really clean. Uh, that Rockford processor just makes life so much easier to tune. So if you're looking for a good processor that you don't want to spend a ton of money on because you're not, you know, you're not going to go to competition with it. You're look at the Rockford processor. I'm telling you, you will be a hundred percent satisfied. One thing I can tell you, um, watch the updaters. There is a, you need to update that unit. There's a Rockford DSR-1 updater, and then there's the iDatalink Maestro. Um, make sure both of those are set up. Do the updates on Rockford first, then do the Maestro setup. 
Um, that's the way I've done it, and I feel that that is the most consistent way um, of getting it right every time. So um, just make sure they're all updated. Other than that, um, put it in, play with it, do your EQs, do your crossovers, uh, and enjoy, because <laughs> honestly, that just sounded amazing. So um, that's all I can say. But uh, like, subscribe, share, um, comment down below if you guys have any questions, um, concerns, you want to know a little bit more about it in depth if I didn't get to something um, that's on here. But I will try to put a picture of the back of that or I'll post it straight from uh, the Rockford site on there. So, But uh, it really makes me want to put one in my own truck at this point. So I think that's my next upgrade is the DSR one because now I'm really craving it. So, But uh, peace out. Keep it rocking. Uh, installing the DSR-1 processor. I don't know where the box is.